Let us try to explore calculation views now. By now we are clear that attribute views are for dimensions and analytical views are for facts and dimensions. Also analytical view can consume other attribute views. Since OLAP engine gets triggered, OLAP engine gets triggered for analytical view, therefore analytical view is best for aggregations. With aggregation I mean the sum, the average, maximum, minimum. So whenever you have to do those mathematics of aggregations, then analytical view is your choice. If analytical views can do all the aggregations, then what was the need of calculation view? One of the best justification of calculation view is calculation view can join two or more analytical views which the analytical view cannot do by itself. Analytical view can join multiple attribute views and uh, other tables but they cannot join another analytical view. So if you want to join or link two or more analytical views then you need to have uh, the calculation views ready. So the second point states that uh, the calculation views can consume tables, attribute views, other analytical views and even other calculation views. So when we have this complex business requirement then calculation views is our choice. Calculation view also has graphical and script based editor so which is, an, uh, which is another point which differentiates it from attribute view and analytical view. As of HANA 2.0 SAP has decided to deprecate the attribute views and analytical views. Going forward, if you are in any S4 HANA project, you will not be required to create any attribute view or analytical view. Your calculation view should handle all these views together. Many of the clients who have built attribute views and analytic views in, um, in the past and if they are in HANA 2.0 now, they are trying to convert it to, into calculation view because calculation views has other benefits and it can handle more complex business requirements and with much more performance efficiency. I am sure you are still not convinced why calculation view is needed. So let us take a simple use case. Say your company provides IT consulting services. You need consultants to deliver the service. And also you need projects to earn revenue to pay your consultant. Your liability is the salary and the expenditure uh, to the consultant and your asset is the revenue earned by the employees or the revenue earned by the consultant. Now you need to uh, figure out whether a particular consultant is a asset or a liability for you. For that what we can do? We can build two analytical views. The first analytical view would have the hours booked by the consultant and the salary paid and the expenditure paid to him and the another analytical view would have the hours booked by the consultant in the client's billable project and that would give you the revenue earned for the company by that particular client or oh, sorry by that particular uh, employee or the consultant but those two separate analytical views would not give you a very good idea whether he is um, earning or whether he is a liability so if if you make it simple you might be able to figure it out but it's not that simple right so there are many factors to consider so once we have both the analytical view ready we can join these two analytical analytical views and when we need to join two analytical views we need to use calculation views because Attribute view and analytical view does not have the capability to join two analytical views. So we need to use calculation views to join two or more analytical views. By joining these two analytical views, one for the salary paid and another for the revenue earned, we can get a quick view if the employee is contributing to the growth of the company or not. The difference in the revenue earned and the expenditure would give a fa fair idea to the stakeholders or to the leadership. Just a quick disclaimer, time booked in the project is not the only single criteria to value the worth of an employee. So there are many other properties or many other features like leadership, management, sales, client facing, demo, grooming, training, etc. So the employee might be contributing in some other facets. So we should not always consider an employee 
better if he is just booking the time in the project. So just for the simplicity, we are just considering revenue and expenditure, but it is not that simple in real uh, IT industries. So the point which I am trying to put forth in this slide is that if we build a calculation view by joining two analytical views and find the difference, it would give a very fair idea to the leadership to take some informed decisions. I gave an example of the employee in the IT consulting service, but it can be something else as well. A company might be selling say iPhone 4 and it might be purchasing iPhone 4 from some other vendor. But if the sale of the iPhone 4 is not as much as what we have produced, then we are blocking the money, right? So we, that is not beneficial. And if we are not able to sell the product, then we will not be able to pay the vendors. So we, there is a loss loss. Now you do not have a customer to buy and also you do not have enough money to pay the vendor. So you do not want to be in those situations. So in order to analyze such situation, you need to know exactly how much is the sales or what is the, what is the trend of the sale and what is the trend of the purchase. So you need to have a balance. You need to have this, uh, you need to have the balance of the supply and demand and that can be best achieved using the calculation views.